and welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing another video with my Centerpoint Sniper 370 because the previous video I did, which would be two videos back, actually got so much feedback that I want to do another one. I got a couple requests from a few different people under a few different videos with this crossbow to do penetration tests and also angle tests. So what I'm going to try to do today, I've got four different styles of broadheads out here. Not all different styles, but different, like, just different broadhead concepts. Okay, I've got a just your a generic fixed blade, three blade broadhead with a point on it. And then I've got this G5 T3, which is also another a very popular broadhead as well as this swacker as well as this broadhead which is my current choice for my sniper 370 for deer hunting purposes now when doing this test I do want you guys to consider this is a test just out of curiosity just to see just how good one of these broadheads might end up being or two of these I mean I don't know but in all reality this is not realistic in a sense of shooting at a deer at an angle because this is just straight Board. It's not like there's hide to bite into or you know meat or anything else. So it's just wood But the cool thing is if there's broadheads out of these broadheads that can perform Then I would imagine on a deer quartering away out in the field or in the woods It's gonna perform you know just as excellent if not even better Obviously giving that this is not actually deer hide this is just wood, and on a hide, it'll bite into it a lot better, I feel. Let's get right into this. Gonna test these broadheads. Probably gonna start out with the fixed blade, then go to the T3, then the Swacker, and then the NAP, and just see how they perform, and just see how it all turns out. I think this is gonna be a great test. <laughs> Pretty wild. Now I'm kind of shocked with the, with the results in a sense. I'm not really too shocked that the T3 performed very well, but what shocked me the most was that this fixed blade didn't even scratch the wood. It was kind of it was kind of odd. Now of course there's all different variations of fixed blades, so I'm not saying all fixed blades aren't going to perform well. I'm just saying like for this particular one, I was still shocked even with this one. It didn't even bite into the wood, and the tip of this thing is way out in front of like where the blades begin, and it hit at that angle and just completely bounced and stuck into the bale. With the swacker, I mean the Lord only knows where that thing ended up. But the insert came out of the swacker is what happened. So the insert with the broadhead on it just went flying somewhere. Same thing happened with this one. And this this one really shocked me because I've seen another video where a guy was testing with swackers. You know, of course they were promoting them. But every broadhead bounced off the board except for the swacker. And the swacker completely ate straight through it. And that was not the case in this test. So just to do it for myself, of course, if you do it enough times, you probably eventually have it completely pass through and stick and everything. But my experience just now was this thing hit the board and deflected off almost exactly like the fixed blade did. This first, this three bit, three blade uh, fixed blade. It hit and it whipped and bowed so bad it busted this whole top part of the bolt and actually the knot came flying out and the insert, it wasn't like it just busted off and went flying. The insert came loose when it hit that board. I'm sure it knocked it loose and then with that just force it just kind of like tossed it. I don't know where it went, but the swacker did not bite. It bit into the board. Like you could see where it, it tried to bite in and it made a big crease in the wood and then it just deflected, but it did not completely bite in and pass it into the board. This is out of order, but here is the NAP Spitfire that I used. And this broadhead did exceptionally well. Not great, but it, it performed way better. The reason I'm saving this one in the T3 for last was because this one in the T3 performed the best. This one sucked. The Swacker sucked. And I was a believer in Swackers and I killed deer with Swackers. Of course, like I said, 
It's gonna perform way different on a hide on an animal than it is with the board. But this is just a test that I wanted to do for myself just to see just how well a broadhead could perform even on a board at that sharp of an angle. These two were not good. I'm gonna show you the board and what it did for this broadhead. This broadhead, you could see part of one of the blades. Yeah, that was the tail end of one of the blades. It actually opened up a little bit and I think that might have been what screwed it over is it opened up too soon too high up onto the broadhead because as soon as the the point was starting to bite into the board you know it caught on these boots right here on the side boot looking things and then just I'm sure that kind of just kind of screwed it over a little bit but it bit in pretty good I just saw tons of wood chips go flying like it hit at this angle dug in and then you know how it see how those boots kind of just snagged the board and then it just went in and it just like those boots just kind of scraped in through here, ate off a big chunk of that wood right there and then just stuck into the thing. But same thing happened with this one. So much force, the the, whole, the entire insert just came right out like nothing. Kind of wild. The T3 got just as damaged as the NAP Spitfire did. One of the blades came off, which is still pretty good durability, but one of the blades did come off, which isn't terrible, but it did, you know, detach. I'm shooting at a board, so it's expected. This broadhead decimated that board. It went in right here, and I don't know if the ferrule is just really, really good on this broadhead so well that it performed the way that it did. And I'm thinking, the, like, the point of this can bite in, and then the blades slide back and not open up forward made a huge difference difference in broadhead performance for an angling shot because like I said I love those Spitfire broadheads but like if you're going at an angle like this those blades if they open back like they have to open forward and swing back it gives you kind of a disadvantage on a quartering shot you know it gives more push to where it can throw that broadhead off track but with this you can actually see where the broadhead expanded almost the shape of it there's a blade and there's a blade down here and of course there's an open blade all the way into here until it went all the way through. It went in here flawlessly, bit into the board, right on contact like they're supposed to and just fed straight through and it still stayed expanded, you know, pushing through all the way up in there and it actually came all the way out back here. That's a great performing broadhead. I'm very pleased with that. And you know, a buddy of mine, he uses these uh, T3s and they absolutely love them. You can definitely understand why. The broadhead design is just pretty flawless. I'm in total shock right now, in a sense, mostly because I honestly thought the Swacker and that fixed blade would have performed the best out of the four broadheads. But um, that was definitely not the case. That T3 just, that T3 performed like a champ and I'm really excited for that. So if you guys want to check out the Swacker, the T3, and the... NAP Spitfire Max Broadhead. I will leave those three. I'll leave all three of those in order, in the order that they performed the best in the description below if you guys wanna go check those out. And like I said, guys, this T3 performed like a champ. I'm honestly thinking I might switch to T3s again because I used T3s for like a year out of my compound and they did perform very well, but I just wanted to try something different. I just always wanna try new stuff, but they did perform like a champ. So thank you so much guys for tuning in to today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I just lost about $60 in equipment. So if you guys could please like and share this video and leave comments, that would be awesome. I'm actually getting some comments on YouTube right now. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up. I wanna to try to get this video up to 50 likes if that's possible, so please do that, guys. Anybody watching this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps out a ton, and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll catch you in the next video.